ओके वी आर गोइंग लाइव इन थ्री टू वन good morning good afternoon good evening for all the participants joining from different parts of the world welcome you all for today's webinar i am your host santosh padmanabhan sales director yash technologies coming with close to around 18 years experience within the industrial and manufacturing space the topic of today's webinar is accelerating smart manufacturing with digital workflows we will discuss how manufacturing companies can harness the power of a unified platform to unlock the benefits throughout the value chain and transform their service delivery with service now please do post your questions in the q and a section during the session i am delighted to introduce our fellow panelists for today i have soma sundaram from service now and bharat from yash technologies I, uh, soma would you like to give a quick intro thank you santosh yes um hi uh, i am uh, soma sundaram here okay yeah, i am a regional solutions architect based out of singapore and i do have around 17 plus years of experience in large scale uh, i transformation projects covering both it and ot and uh, with service now i am actually one of the uh, the lead solution architect uh, covering the entire manufacturing industry vertical uh, over to you bharat bharat would you like to give a quick yeah. intro yeah this is bharat notekki i am working as senior practice manager for uh, service now yakesh thank you bharat thank you both for the giving the quick intro on behalf of yash technologies i welcome you all once again for today's webinar let us now move into our discussion and get this webinar started and as a reminder for all the participants please do post your questions during the sessions and we will take it up at the end of the session and try to answer as many questions as possible now as we move forward soma as you know most manufacturing companies have existed for centuries but are being disrupted by many challenges and the new technologies which is coming across i would like to know what do you think the trends or the challenges which we need to be utmost paying attention to and what are your thoughts around it sure thanks thanks santosh um so if you look at the global trends and challenges right uh, we would like to just uh, categorize into three four different pillars what you see here start from the factory level suppliers channels and customers and lastly the enterprise right uh, but uh, over in service now actually we do see all this crisis or challenges as an opportunity basically say for example uh, take that uh, for factory factory uh, automation right with the rise of industry 4.0 there is a great need for this it ot convergence and uh, that also brings up the lot of complexities in terms of uh, the it ot convergence and also that open up the gateway for the cyber security issues right uh, because ultimately there was an air gap between it and ot system now that's been the the line become blur and this uh, uh, that is that is a potential hack happens uh, within the manufacturing industry and you all know right actually the manufacturing industry is the second largest industry that been this having become a prey for the attackers uh, and the bad intruders would like to just take over and do malfunction across many of the examples like stunex iranian uh, nuclear power plant or it could be dragonfly or it could be the ukrainian uh, the electrical grid that was being just attacked by russian so so many of the examples i can pull it out so cyber security is a key potential threat for this manufacturing industry but uh, looking at this angle of like how to prevent that and to out take uh, counter measures uh, to just avoid such uh, bad uh, attackers uh, scenarios and that's how we can just have the exhaustive vulnerability response solutions in place we can just take talk it over uh, in a little bit of time and secondly if you look at the suppliers uh, scope right uh, because the supplier network is needs to be like uh, as much as track and traceable and it needs to be in a very real time but uh, during the time of pandemic situation uh, you, we all know that uh, supply chain industry was uh, adversely affected uh on example i could just bring, bring out is like uh, that is a huge shortage for the semiconductor chip basically and uh, that impacts not only the the smartphone industry but also the automotive industry plus the the utilities industry that produces a lot of the smart tvs fridges and all the smart city the smart uh, iot the items everything so that becomes uh, actually a bigger impact on the uh, the manufacturing industry but how we can use that supply chain exception management supply chain life cycle management to cover all this 
exception exceptions that can be covered with supply chain uh, the portfolio of solutions and uh, thirdly looking at the uh, the channels and customers right now the trend is actually it's not uh, good to like sell a product basically it is something like uh, selling a product as a service basically what's the product as a service means because uh, take tesla as a classic example right they are not actually selling a car basically but on top of that they are selling a value added service in terms of like having the connected infotainment or a connected insurance or it could be like connected uh, the data just pulled from the different traffic light controller to understand about the, the traffic situation all these things actually becomes very much uh, uh, resonates for the any customer that they are using this product and that is how the trend actually is going on now right and lastly how that uh, uh, the enterprise service actually has been uh, become a victim of all that uh, the net zero targets and reduce the carbon footprints and everything because you know right the sustainability is one of the the great uh, uh, the pain point that every uh, company that has to like undergo some regulations from the uh, government that they are pressing at uh, so much right uh, so that's how this four key pillars has been just expanded and uh, service now being at the fulcrum of the wheel how that can balance all this ecosystem of this entities and managing it well using our industry value chain and i'll touch upon that later on and this is our take and bharat uh, so what's your uh, perception of seeing from the yash lens can you please share that a little bit yeah <clears throat> so let me take this uh, so yash is a, a digital engineering company uh, with uh, presence in uh, 40 plus locations right so it's a uh, uh, we have been in this industry from quite a long time in last 26 years we have been engaged with companies across uh, various industries, like whether it is on manufacturing, mining, chemical process, agrotech, healthcare, and life science segments, right? So uh, uh, as for several of our customers, uh, we've been a partner of choice as part of their digital uh, transformation journey. Yes, brings the unique positioning of being a consulting and a technology implementation partner, where we bring or experiences around ERP integration and the digital services combined together. And the digital services cutting across IoT, cloud, AI, ML, data uh, analytics space, augmented reality, cybersecurity, and today we are talking about even metaverse. So especially within the, uh, within the manufacturing space, we work closely with our customers solving some of the uh, uh, some part of a uh, business problem which revolves around uh, their industry port daughter journey and uh, uh, closely on the uh, sensor to cloud uh, transformation roadmap, right? So we have been involved and as part of that, our entire technology uh, uh, offerings has been used uh, to define the entire problem statement. We have been engaged uh, in areas like uh, predictive maintenance, uh, uh, operational effective, uh, uh, um, uh, effectiveness, and we are talking about uh, uh, demand forecasting, fleet management, autonomous delivery. These are some of the use cases where we have worked very closely with our customer uh, using uh, technology as the enablement uh, to solve the business problems. To uh, let you know, one of the uh, interesting business use case for a manufacturing customer was around uh, where they wanted to uh, us to be involved in uh, building a, a, a visibility for the shop flow to top floor integration and uh, look at the uh, visibility of a key KPIs across uh, uh, 45 segments, which can cut across uh, finance, manufacturing, and warehouse segments. So uh, there have been several uh, customers who have been coming uh, in discussion with us as a uh, uh, and transforming their entire journey. And I think with service now and a strategic partnership, which we are working together around. Uh, uh, the new products which you are going to talk about in detail about on the OT and the IT side, how it can be integrated and solve some of the uh, complex problems. I, I totally believe that we are moving and yes, uh, is taking this entire journey to a notch higher uh, to bring a kind of enhanced experience for all our stake stakeholders across the enterprises. And I would like, as we move forward, I like uh, Bharat to talk more in detail about what is our ServiceNow capabilities and how are we looking at it uh, uh, in, in collaboration with ServiceNow in solving some of these uh, uh, customer problems. Bharat, over to you. Would you like to uh, take a quick overview on that? Yes. Uh, thank you, Santosh. Okay. Good morning, good evening, uh, everyone across who are joined across the globe. Uh, let me uh, give you an overview of uh, yes, ServiceNow COE. Uh, yes, she's a premier partner for service now for sales services and service provider uh, area. Uh, let me share interesting uh, journey of uh, uh, Yash with service now. Uh, 
uh, Yash started his uh, journey uh, like a customer first. As part of Yash digital transformation journey, first we have uh, implemented IT service management to address our IT service delivery challenges uh, across uh, our uh, 40 plus uh, delivery centers. And then uh, recently we have uh, released the strategic portfolio management to address our uh, project portfolio resource management and uh, uh, output kind of issues. So uh, overall, our uh, CU is having 100 plus resources uh, uh, span across the globe. Our resources are having uh, 150 plus mainland certifications uh, uh, spanning products like uh, IT service management, operations management, uh, security operations, integrated risk management, etc. So like uh, Santosh mentioned, so we are offering our uh, services like uh, implementation, advisory and consulting, and uh, support services uh, for our customers across the globe. As on date, uh, we were successfully able to execute 30 plus greenfield implementations uh, for our various customers across the globe. So Yesh is having its expertise into our domains like manufacturing, BFSI, healthcare life sciences, and uh, energy and etc. Today, I would like to present to you Yesh service nerve, uh, solutions for manufacturing domain. Please, if you look at the center of the screen, so these solutions are bundled under five uh, buckets. I'll go left to right. First one is customer workflows, predominantly deals with uh, uh, customer facing process. Uh, we have uh, three major solution areas uh, covering these uh, workflows, uh, which are built on top of uh, base products of service, you know, like uh, customer service management and uh, field service management products. The second one is factory work workflows, predominantly deals with uh, workflows uh, within the four walls of the factory. Of course, I'll be covering these two products shortly. Uh, third one is supplier workflows predominantly deals with how do we enhance uh, collaboration between suppliers and manufacturers. Fourth one is workforce workflows predominantly deals around uh, employee and HR space. Uh, this covers how do we enhance the employee experiences across the factory, across the manufacturing enterprise. How do we engage and how do we uh, support them uh, on uh, activities like uh, onboarding, onboarding, time offs. Uh, healthcare and uh, safety related questions or there could be questions related to COVID, this new normal, uh, etc. We have built our solutions uh, on top of uh, service now based products like HR service delivery, workspace uh, service delivery, and uh, safe workplace applications. And the next one, last but not the least, ID and shared service workflows. Of course, this is bread and butter of service now, which is uh, service now is well known in the market for. Under IT workflows, uh, we have solutions like IT service management, operations management, asset management to uh, get the visibility of assets across the enterprise, secured operations, followed by integrated risk management. Of course, today I'm not going to spend, spend much time on this. Uh, let me uh, go to the factory workflows. If you ask me, Bharat, don't you have uh, uh, manufacturing specific products from service now? Answer is yes. So first one is uh, there are two products which are highlighted in red in the middle of the screen under the factory workflows. First one is operational technology management community deals around uh, driving the visibility, security, and vulnerability issues of uh, OT and IT assets across the factory. And uh, second one is uh, manufacturing connected workforce. Uh, this is a data model, basically leverages uh, low code, no code uh, platform capabilities of ServiceNow, bringing ServiceNow close to the factories to digitize their uh, manufacturing uh, factory uh, business process. Let it be safety workflows or uh, let it be <clears throat> startup uh, checklist, let it be you know, changeovers uh, to the incidents that may happen on the shop floor. Uh, let it be uh, inventory outages or maintenance outages or safety or uh, security rate outages, etc. It also helps uh, organizations to track the incidents uh, coming from various sources along with their trend analysis. So with this, if you closely look at all the five workflows uh, which are uh, flashing on the screen, they are helping enterprises, uh, service team is helping uh, the enterprises to build a great experiences uh, for all the stakeholders across the enterprise, not only limiting, limiting to the shop floor. So with this, I would like to pass on the floor to Soma. Soma, why don't you cover uh, you know, two major products under factory workflows, operational technology management and manufacturing connected workflows. That's great. Thanks, uh, Santosh and Bharat, for setting the stage of uh, today's agenda, right? Uh, so, what you see in this slide is basically what's the service now solution offering for the manufacturers, right? Uh, if you look at that uh, ecosystem of that uh, manufacturing industry, this is how the industry value chain looks like. Start with the design. When they would like to just introduce a new product, 
with using that uh, portfolio of new product introduction. And once they decided to just introduce this new product, how they source in the, the supplies from the inbound logistics team from the many suppliers and vendors uh, to the manufacturing, uh, the factory floor. And once that's been arrived at the, the raw materials and necessary, uh, the accessory parts and uh, uh, the, the, all the uh, accessories has been arrived at the manufacturing industry the factory floor, how they started to uh, started to produce the goods in terms of like having the finished goods that needs to be shipped to the customer with all the supply chain uh, network, be it could be a uh, reseller or to be a distributor or to be channel partner with all the connected tissue, uh, how that the supply chain can be uh, expanded well. And lastly, how that uh, once it switches to the doorstep of the customer, how that can be, uh, as, as I mentioned before, like how we can servitize, uh, provide the, uh, the, the product as a service model in terms of like, uh, getting the customers, uh, either it could be uh, some sort of like defects, they have any compliance about the product or it could be any warranties, a guarantee, all those things actually how it can be tackled via the customer portal. All this industry value chain has been just um, under the hood of uh, service now platform that can be very well tackled and managed, right? Uh, so looking at this, uh, the stack over here, uh, how that uh, actually looks like, Start from the technology excellence. Uh, it's it's all about like IT, some IT, IT, OM, IT operations management. Uh, it may be, it could be an, um, uh, any sort of like uh, operational technology also. That's also part of this, uh, the technology excellence. And employee experiences were actually, for the manufacturing industry, that could be the middle office, back office and front office. How do they engage their employees and uh, get them productive and uh, also ensuring their safety and security or at the tip top level? And that is no anomalies happen for any employees, right? So that's all about like employee experience and process automation is where actually, uh, which we are going to touch about like uh, how we can have that automation uh, enabled with the factory floor, floor by having the, using the passive monitoring, discover all the OT assets across the uh, OT and IT network within that uh, factory landscape, how we can ingest the data to our service now and create a digital inventory of records in our CMDB. And lastly, about the sustainability part, which is where actually I touch upon like how uh, efficiently or how sustainably we can just produce the product and can just, that could be environmental friendly. So this is about uh, the nutshell of the, uh, the, uh, the industry value chain over here. And um, if you look at, uh, uh, sorry, I don't have the control on the slides. Can you please provide me the control here? Okay, great. Uh, okay, so before I just go deep dive about the operational technology, I would like to touch base on this, uh, the platform of platform slide. Service now being a platform company, uh, we would like to emphasize and capitalize on the platform uh, capabilities as much as possible. And uh, looking at this slide, right, actually, I, could, I can talk about Lauren more than uh, two, three hours support for the slide, but uh, considering the time, actually, I would like to scrutinize a bit and try to like condense it and make it more natural uh, overview of the platform. So the service now platform, the now platform is built on three key principles, basically. First is like a single data model, single platform and single architecture. What does it mean is like, when I talk about the single data model, you may all about know and aware about like the common service data model that is uh, actually used as, for, uh, as a, the key, um, uh, the design principle for the CMDB, the Com configuration management database. So in this case of uh, common service data model, so what are the data that has been stored in CMDB that used as a transactional data and as used as a shared uh, transaction across different modules of this uh, platform, basically, right? So that's how it helps you to like have the bridge between from or, or transaction uh, level from point A to or module A to module B, and that makes the life uh, of easy for any uh, consumers that are using this platform, basically. So that is actually the simple data model. And look at this architecture. This architecture, based on this architecture, we develop all this, uh, the modules and uh, the applications on top of this platform. And the core capabilities are something like the workflows. Because if you look at the uh, the IT industry, uh, the, uh, the, the how that does it works, right? Based on the, the server uh, request response cycle, right? The same request response cycle, take it as a uh, sequential step and enable with workflow. Uh, the one step process which is an output has been fitted to the input as a next step. So that's become a sequential step of uh, workflow. That's how the workflow enablement helps to easily understand and uh, 
uh, kick in the process from point A to point B to point C, right? So this is how actually the workflow can is the uh, the job of any uh, process uh, engine, right? And next one is the machine learning capability. The machine learning capability is basically like using the AI ops and exploit the functions of AI ops basically. For example, <clears throat> if take a uh, factory floor, right? So uh, that would be like hundreds of thousands of assets that's been spread across uh, the factory landscape. And uh, each one of that uh, device are the, um, the asset basically churn out the data that could be at the regular interval. And uh, consider that hundreds of thousands of devices share out the data at regular interval of one minute or two minute or three minute time. So that will be blasted with so many hundreds of thousands of millions of events basically. It's almost inhuman for any persona to just go and look at each one of the incident to, to look at the incident, like classify it, categorize it, prioritize it, prioritize it, and uh, look at that, uh, the, the most uh, uh, severe incident, right? So that way, AAOps takes that, uh, the lead to like go and identify the severity of the incident and the severity of that, uh, <clears throat> the event, basically, and try to categorize on its own. And even to some extent, it auto assign that incident to some of the persona who has already existing knowledge about that particular incident or the problem, basically. So that's why AAOps play a vital role here uh, within our platform. And again, the user experience, basically. So if you look at this, uh, <clears throat> basically all the communication and collaboration tools, right? It's almost all the communication tools like Slack, Microsoft Teams, or it could be uh, maybe even uh, uh, using some sort of other uh, collaboration tools, all can be integrated. Uh, and also RP engine and uh, voice chatbot is actually uh, taken the lead role, try to deflect the issues as much as possible and try to provide the self-service uh, uh, support and self-healing measures, right? And that's why the user experience is very, uh, uh, one of the, the sustainable or probably the significant uh, use case here for this platform, the capability. And try to like reuse the data as much as possible using the common service data model, as I mentioned before. And security and compliance is basically our DNA, right? So security is in our DNA in terms of like starts with the network security, how the data that has been at uh, data address and data at motion, how that's been encrypted and using the security key wall, how the, to uh, store the data in a security fashion. And lastly, again, about like how the identity access management plays a vital role in terms of providing the, the user roles, personas, and also how, what are the privileges for each of these personas. Basically, all this actually, the capabilities are part of this platform as an inbuilt, right? On top of that, how we develop that application is where usually you see, as I mentioned before, for the industry value, manufacturing industry value chain, how we develop this product, start from design source, make and sell, and lastly, service, right? And uh, yeah, who are all the personas that they can use, right? It could be business users, or it could be third parties uh, users, or it could be some sort of like developers or customers based on their needs. The platform can have that uh, the tailored needs uh, that uh, serve that uh, functionality for that particular user or consumer of the platform. So, uh, and lastly, what you see at the southbound interfaces basically, uh, it's all the, it, you take almost all the products, uh, the endpoint product, endpoint solutions or products or tools. We do have the ready made integration uh, connectors for most, almost all the tools out there in the market. If ever they are, uh, that is not an out of the box integration connector. We use the bespoke connector to just develop using the integration hub to connect to that system and uh, get that unified system of record. So basically getting the data from different sources and creating a unified system of record, that is actually the wonder of service now. And in terms of like uh, stitching the uh, the product and uh, trying to like avoid the space, white space and gray space by cascading that uh, point system A to system B and get the data to, uh, to serve a service platform and provide a single source of truth. So this is how the platform of platform speech basically for some, some servers now. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, next slide. Okay, so the today's agenda is like we are going to like talk about and uh, uh, deep dive about like uh, what's there uh, on the operational technology and how service now uses operational technology to like provide the value added services to the customer uh, in terms of the manufacturing customers. Uh, whoever uses this uh, OTM, right? So um, as I mentioned before, this is, these are some of the down uh, turn uh, issues, for example, that could be, an, uh, if our, with the rise of industry 4.0, there needs to be like a lot of uh, uh, proactive measures that needs to be happened uh, in terms of more reactive maintenance to try to avoid the downtime. That's 
almost every manufacturing company or non manufacturing company they always want to like improve the productivity right and i try to cut down the cost and increase the revenue stream right so this is what actually the ambition for almost all the industry that's the kpi so how we can do that using the otm and again how we can protect against the cyber attacks uh, in a proactive fashion and uh, also like uh, try to minimize the human error because uh, the human error is one of the biggest challenges for any manufacturing industry it's because of the uh, uh, more of like a low uh, skilled labor workforce uh, which uh, you know right actually the millennial and gen z workers are more addicted to it gadgets and mobile phones they don't want to like do this menial uh, job uh, in terms of like all the blue collar job so that's become a uh, bigger uh, challenge for the manufacturing industry and again the skilled workforce is getting diminished day by day right and there is a statistic says that by 2030 almost like 60 to 70 percentage of the workforce are going to be get automated and uh, there won't be like much humans um, in that in the factory floor to do all the jobs and that will be like control tower they would do monitor from the actual uh, white collar job right and again how they uh, try to re reduce the cost as much as possible right and these are some of the statistics as i mentioned before um manufacturing industry is the second most uh, second largest industry that's been uh, getting attacked uh because of the great push for digitization and again if there is a downtime happen for any assets um that could be average cost of around 250 to 700k and uh, i think this this numbers even may go up depends on the, the scalability of that uh, the, the production and also the volume of that uh, the goods they produce every day and uh, what you see the 60% of the data breach is happening at the scada level <clears throat> because scada is actually a it machine uh that sits in the ot network and uh, um, intruders or bad bad attackers try to like intrude the system via the scala scala network which is the field network or industrial network in the uh, ot landscape basically right uh, next slide please great so this is the slide i would like to pitch and emphasize like so what we see here are probably any uh, manufacturing plant personas see this is a tip of iceberg basically so they they see only the uh, the very uh, the superficial level of uh, the the assets and also their connections and relationships but underneath that actually there is a lot of independencies which is not visible to the factory floor uh, personas basically so that is always a saying right you can't secure your assets unless you have the better visibility of your entire uh, uh, the technology the ot or assets landscape basically so that's how service now plays a pivotal role in terms of like identifying each and nook and corner of that uh, the device where it does uh, where it's been located and what's the heartbeat status of it and what's the operational behavior and uh, how how regularly that's been get communicated with the, the, the that peers may be it hmi scan or whatever it may be and uh, getting that uh, transactional data and churn it out the data using service graph related to send it to uh, cmdb to get it all ingested and stored in uh, as a ci records basically so that's how service now helps to like understand about the entirety of the uh, the level 0 to level 4 and 5 process if you look at the party model landscape right and uh, yeah so these are some of the challenges like lack of visibility more manual process and more security risks and vulnerabilities postures are so high and again workforce challenges how we can tackle that is in uh, service using service now platform that's what we are going to see now yeah and next slide okay so this is actually i would like to just cover up in a very high level anyway we are going to show the demo uh, which is going to be exhaustive functionality you can uh, see in a short uh, runway time <clears throat> start with the punch foundation basically the foundation is nothing but actually first we need to discover the assets using some sort of like discovery source and discovery tool so in this case actually it could be any third party integration uh, product like uh, you can name it like tenable cloud strike micro uh, defender microsoft defender or it could be like uh, uh, clarity nasomi you can name any of this uh, uh, well renowned uh, the product uh, the as the discovery tool is there in the market they just go and do the passive scanning or passive monitoring uh, with a use dropping mode and try to like get the data by means of sniffing and once the data that's been collected or that's been sent to the service now platform and we create a digital inventory of records using our uh, cmdb and also with the connection entities and relationships basically right with all the dependency view that is called we call it as a digital twin view of the entire uh, the, the connection and relationship landscape and again uh, for that particular assets you you, get, you you created a very robust inventory of records 
but i would like to understand what's happening there and is there any security issues or vulnerability response that uh, my devices are more prone to vulnerability how you can understand that so that's using the vr connector to ingest the data and correlate the data for the specific assets and we identify well, what would be the potential threat for that uh, any specific device either it could be some sort of like firmware updates not been properly done or any security patches that has been missed for a long time or any end of life support for some of the operating system that used in uh, the factory uh, uh, the uh, the network basically uh, maybe windows nt for instance you can take that as an end of life support if there is an uh, security post issue happens there is no way they have to rip and replace that right and that becomes a downtime for them and again, lastly, the service management piece. Uh, the service management is not only uh, very much um, uh, attached to the IT industry, but for OT industry, that is very, very much needed because availability is the key, key um, uh, use case or key, key KPI for any uh, factory automation. Because if ever a PLC goes down, that has a bigger impact on controlling different OT control modules and RTU systems and as well as the, the field devices. And that becomes a bigger impact. So that's why they need to understand the availability of that particular device and how they can triage to remediate and put a resolution fix and keep this uh, uptime of the assets all the time to improve the OEE numbers. Right. Uh, next slide. So uh, what you see here is basically this is basically the Purdue model that has been universally adapted across any of the OT control or uh, industrial control systems, basically. Start with the level zero. That is where actually all the field devices located, which does all the uh, mechanical and electromechanical electro job, like cobot uh, moving from point A to point B to uh, locate, uh, dislocate uh, the, the goods or whatever it may be. And that's been controlled by a PLC. And uh, how other PLC got the uh, controls delegated from SCADA or HMI server, that's become a thermostat for um, uh, any plant, plant persona to just go and control the speed of uh, uh, our RPM or velocity, or it could be on a switch on off of all these uh, devices that needs to be controlled uh, via this PLC. So that's why HMI will be heavily used. And SCADA server just collects the data and uh, create an um, uh, log analytics. Basically, Isolin uh, has the log analytics, but SCADA also does some sort of like supervisory mechanism in terms of identifying what are exactly the real time situations and scenarios. And again, uh, these are all the IT gadgets. Basically, the engineering workstation basically has a schematic diagram of the entire uh, the, 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 the plant floor uh, in terms of like having the CAD CAM based. Uh, the diagrams with all the data overlay, the data points overlay on, on top of that uh, CAD CAM. And again, the IO server, these are all some of the IT gadgets basically, but sits with the OT network. That is the CAM. Suppose it's in an IT scenario, even uh, uh, Discovery tool like SCCM, or it could be some sort of a Qualys or Rapid7. I can, they can just even go on, identify and discover this device. But this is an OT network. Availability is the key key um, uh, the, the requirement for any uh, factory persona. If ever they try to like just probe the device or uh, just try to like uh, do the scanning in terms of active scanning, that becomes a uh, performance bottleneck for that particular device to like respond back to that uh, request instead of doing their own job, right? So that is what actually uh, always that is uh, uh, keep it in mind. It should be always a passive scanning and with using the span port, uh, port mirroring, how we can just uh, get the communication that's been uh, without any intrusion of this network, right? And uh, what you see here is the DMC layer. Uh, this is the air gap between the IT and OT system. And uh, what you see from this, all the IT uh, level uh, devices like ERP systems, um, all your software applications, enterprise uh, applications, all running the, the level four and five. So why we show this uh, Purdue model risk? We take in the same Purdue model and create the structure within service now CMDB. And you, what you see here, actually, the configuration is uh, virtually has been uh, configured in service of CMDB. For any plant personnel, they can easily um, uh, correlate and understand. Uh, so oh, this is how actually the body model looks like. And uh, CMDB has the same structure. So it's easy for them to like connect back, right? So I'll show you in the demo scenario uh, quite soon how that happens. And um, uh, with service now, that it can be uh, handled in the entirety, both IT and OT side of the uh, the world. Yeah. Yeah. Next slide. Our next slide, please. Sorry. Okay. Uh, let me start with the demo scenario. I think the slides are done. Maybe I can just open up to show you my uh, 
the demo and yeah just give me a second hope you all can see my uh, the portal window is that is that visible yes sir ma yes sir ma okay great so for today's demo right uh, the demo for the operational technology manager um, i would like to just have the demo scenario using four different personas basically uh, start with the production engineer so who who has the kpi in terms of the roles and responsibilities he needs to like uh, he is the responsible guy for all the uh, the oe numbers and also the uptime of all the assets if ever there is an assets go down in a production line or uh, any uh, uh, any sort of like uh, what do you call the assembly line so that uh, his his uh, kpi has been directly impacted and he is the person that needs to go and uh, uh, look at the issue and rectify the issue and uh, keep that in place within the stipulated time right so that's what his uh, key roles and responsibilities that's where the uh, plant uh, production engineer or the line supervisor you can name it in different industry there is a different name uh, yeah so uh, he's at a very uh, little bit of low level and uh, the next uh, persona that i'm going to introduce is like um, he is the site supervisor basically or it could be some cases it could be like a site manager or it could be like a, a line supervisor you can name it into so he is more interested of like uh, each of the sites uh that is no such significant uh, anomalies or any significant uh, impact on the downtime right so because he looks at that very uh, high level umbrella uh, of that bird eye view so from his uh, point of view uh, all that uh, based on the sales order what did we just received from the uh, the customer are we on uh, target to just produce the goods and ship to the goods on time so for that uh, everything all uh, running in uh, running in a perfect uh, uh, shape and there is no anomaly or uh, some sort of like uh, any uh, rubbing situation happens there in the factory floor and thirdly uh, that's, so sorry uh, to interrupt uh, so i am not able to see the personas in the screen right now okay so personas uh, let's just a second uh, can you yeah. see this yeah great yeah. so uh, that is one more uh, or two more uh, persona which is like uh, jill jill is basically um, uh, the plant cyber security officer so she is actually more um uh, tangible towards like all the proactive measures on the vulnerability sector security ops and any security compliance and so on so right and lastly there is one more uh, folk which is like robert actually he is the head of manufacturing operations he always uh, looks at the commercial numbers and uh, oe numbers and also the uh, uh, just mapping of the sales goods with the the delivered uh, the the capacity uh based on the resource planning all this is actually is is actually very keen to know about right so with this uh, all this four personas that, that's been uh, there in the plant floor uh, every day they have a fire fighting and uh, kind of uh, the challenges they need to encounter on a day to day life in terms of like this dale uh, has to like look go and look at uh, yes actually with the system uh, probably uh, there is no mobility of uh, any uh, devices he has very limited visibility across the production landscape and whichever uh, whenever there is an issue happens he, it's more of like reactive maintenance for them rather than it's more of proactive maintenance so he needs to encounter the issue and work on the challenge for troy actually he don't have any sort of centralized view for plant operations basically in which actually he needs to have a central dashboard to from the control tower he need to look at the uh, um, uh, look at all the different sites and also the different uh, uh, for the uh, sites actually what are the number of assets and what are what's the condition for all the assets basically on the production floor and uh, for the plant cyber security officer basically she needs to have the proper visibility of the vulnerabilities and uh, how if ever there is a vulnerability happens she needs to anticipate and uh, try to like rectify as soon as possible before even the uh, vulnerability is going to like impact as part of the downside operations right so yeah how that can be tackled within service now that's what actually a million dollar question we are going to show you in the demo right so i take this first person or dale baxter right so the dale baxter is actually he needs to understand that uh, what exactly that uh, the ot the factory floor the landscape looks like by having the different devices and also the uh, uh, the different assets how that's been connected with each other and what's the condition condition and operational behavior of it basically 
say as i mentioned the party model we've taken this party model this is actually one of the classification of the party model here where you see here is SCADA server as part of the downstream process that connects to a plc when i say connects to a plc that actually pushes the uh, uh, the control uh, to the plc that plc just uh, push the the control and delegates to the ot control modules right so that ot control module take the job and pass it to the uh, the field devices or operating equipment to do the job at a regular interval at a stipulated time right whereas actually the scada server that needs to also like have the upstream process of like uh, uh, man managing some some of the scada clients in, as part of the distributed control system uh, right and also it has uh, it needs to communicate to the ews engineering workstation to feed the data uh, in terms of rolling that uh, the, the data points or the schematic diagram to understand from the uh, uh, taxonomy view of that particular uh, uh, equipment, either it could be H HVAC or ACMV or it could be whatever you can name it, right? Uh, all the complicated systems, basically. And as part of the historian, it the collects the data and using for log analytics, basically. And that's how uh, the SCADA server sends the data to the historian as well. And um, this will be detected by an intrusion detection system, as I mentioned before, which we are uh, using some sort of like third-party integration services. Why we use a third-party integration services? Because they are very much established and they are actually uh, 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 like trying to like normalize across the different industrial protocols, either it will be backnet, propnet, back, um, IO servers, or it could be like, um, yeah, you can name it, because each each of the OEM, right, Siemens, Schneider, ABB, has their own proprietary protocols, how they can normalize using this, uh, uh, intrusion integration system. That's why actually we use the third-party integration services, right? Um, okay. Now I quickly uh, just uh, jump into this. Uh, for Dale Baxter, uh, he needs to understand about what are the different uh, OT assets basically, and uh, for that OT assets, what's actually the uh, how the the digital twin view and the service dependency view looks like, right? To understand. Uh, for this PLC, how, how it's connected to a the control module and it as well as it's connected to back to an um, uh, down upstream process like AWS or HMI or so on so, right? So you can see all this actually OT assets, basically uh, what is the OT asset and what's the OT asset type, the IP address, uh, manufacturer, what's the, who is the OEM uh, that manufactured this particular asset, basically, and uh, the model number, description, PADU level, Audio level, as I show you that level one, zero, one, two, three, that's the audio level, and which zone it belongs to, uh, because for factory floor, uh, there could be a different zones, basically, that's been triangulated, how that uh, zone can be configured, and site, which site it is also, like it's a London site or Atlanta site, whatever it may be, and uh, what's the asset criticality of each asset, uh, uh, assets, basically, it's, uh, this is a very, very key imperative need for any plant persona to understand, uh, what's the criticality of that particular assets, right? If it's most critical, then they need to like put the more uh, attention towards it, right? Like uh, uh, fix the issue before any um, uh, any anomaly situation happens. That's the case basically. And what's the discovery source and uh, what's the uh, most recent discovery first discovered and everything. So now what I'm going to do is like, I just drill down to one particular asset. Basically, I take the PLC as a classic example. And uh, you see, this is the form view this is the list view you can see all the list of uh, type of devices basically listed down this is the form view it gives you the granular level of details about that particular assets basically uh, in this case a plc that's what's the party level what's asset criticality what side it belongs to um, uh, the company the model number hardware version everything mac address everything you can just discover it as part of the discovery source and what you see here is the activity stream if ever there is a change happens for example this, when this uh, asset has been firstly discovered and from the discovery time uh, to now, what are the changes that's been reflected in terms of any changes, any firmware updates or any uh, 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 new upgrades as part of the security patches or any other inventory change, all the change management, everything will be captured as part of the activity stream here, right? And you can see all the equipment model entities, which uh, uh, entity it belongs to uh, and also the network adapters um, uh, which you give you that IP address basically, and uh, also the MAC address, serial number, everything you can see as part of the, uh, uh, the, the granular level details. What I'm going to do is like for this PLC, I'm going to open up the digital twin view. So this digital twin view gives you that, uh, the, the graphical representation of like how the PLC is connected to, uh, to the different, uh, the production line, basically which production line it belongs to. Uh, in this case, it's, it's an assembly line. 
some assembly line called H LHR manufacturing assembly line. For that LHR manufacturing assembly line, what are the other uh, the parallel process or the distributed process basically, right? Uh, that connects back to like for this case assembly line, it's actually the downstream process of a manufacturing uh, zone, and that manufacturing zone has the storage area and also the cutting line basically. Because if you look at the the assembly line, right? So first one actually does some sort of like uh, some job, like maybe a, a cutting process. Second one is the molding process. Third one is the uh, maybe like packaging process. So this is how the, the assembly line looks like in the manufacturing, typical manufacturing industry process. And that's how we model here, the entire uh, production flow process. And the good part what you see here is actually, whenever there is an uh, vulnerability that has been identified part for the particular PLC, that is being uh, thrown, identified and thrown uh, in a real time fashion to understand. This is what the CV, CVE basically, right? You know, right? The base of the NIST standards, it is the common vulnerabilities and exposures. This is what the CVE code. And for the CVE code, is there an incident uh, that's been auto identified by the uh, machine learning and AI ops? In this case, actually, the uh, machine learning engine tried to triangulate and identify this PLC has been misconfigured after the service. Either it could be some data patterns fit by some manual uh, incident uh, owners, or did, did this picks up uh, based on the uh, base articles, right? So the data source could be from anything, either manual uh, source or it could be from the knowledge base article, right? So that's how the machine learning is smart enough to like pick it up uh, the incident basically. And for that incident, is there any vulnerabilities or chain management that's already tagged uh, from an uh, incident owner or incident manager? That's all gets captured here. So this is where actually the powerfulness of the inventory of records that's been correlated not only for the vulnerabilities, for the vulnerabilities, what are the incidents, what are the affected CIs? And uh, moreover, I can show you the details basically. If ever this PLC has an issue, and uh, what would be the potential uh, impact on the assembly line, right? So in this case, if PLC has issue, this is the assembly line, <coughs> definitely has some uh, downtime or probably some uh, low threshold uh, in terms of the performance bottleneck. <coughs> and that actually affects the sensor basically. And this is also some of the manual endpoints, all gets impacted, right? And, um, Basically, for that associated CI, uh, what are the incidents that's been created, right? Either it could be the machine learning A ops are basically using that uh, any incident that has been captured uh, from a plant persona, right? <clears throat> so all this can be just uh, mapped here. And again, the vulnerable items, basically, what are the different vulnerable items uh, that's been just, uh, sorry for that. Yeah, so what are the vulnerable items that's been tagged for this particular incident? <coughs> and lastly, what are the related services? So if you click on related services, it will highlight it in yellow, basically, right? Like what's the storage line, assembly line has some impact. This is how actually you can just easily navigate and uh, identify and pick it, pick it up, right? Sorry. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Now going back to the uh, the next persona. So this is how the uh, the <clears throat> the day to day life looks for any any uh, uh, the production line supervisor basically. And uh, looking at the site supervisor level, he needs to understand from the uh, the site level perspective, right? For different sites, what are all the uh, he can just drill down to that specific site and understand what's happening with that particular site. Take, for example, London site. Um, so what are the new OT assets discovered within a recent seven days? This can be configured like uh, as in a timeline, time series uh, manner. Uh, you can just uh, uh, like uh, push it to like uh, later, later date of like even uh, 10 to 15 uh, days or it could be even one month, right? And again, uh, what are the inactive assets that's been discovered, but these assets are still inactive, not in a full operational mode. And what are the vulnerable items that's associated with the particular assets? And lastly, what are the OT tasks in terms of incidents that's been identified? And the good part here is actually, what you see here is the OT vulnerabilities overview. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the machine learning uh, model, right? Actually the machine learning, uh, the AI ops, uh, the engine, basically uh, try to like identify that issue based on that the flooded incidents uh, that received from uh, uh, the data that's from the discovery source and try to like classify, categorize, prioritize, 
and even try to like uh, put that uh, severity of the incident based on the critical high, low, medium, and trivial, right? So this this is very much important for any uh, industrial control system engineer uh, to attack that most severe incident first and uh, to avoid that uh, the bigger impact rather than just go and focus on some trivial matters, right? So this is very much important for any uh, uh, the plant personnel and uh, they can also understand about like what are the vulnerable items and what state it is in. Uh, either it could be waiting for implementation or in under review or it's still in open state or resolved or under investigation. This is the entire workflow scenario. Uh, based on that, uh, the particular status, it gets captured and uh, uh, yeah, it's stated over here. And again, uh, what are the different unclasses? Unclass assets basically means uh, if suppose example, there are a few asset types, right? Like PLC, RTO, DCS, HMI, so on and so If however, that OT device that's not been identified as a certain asset type, that will be tagged as a parent class, which is like operation technology, the base class itself. So that's how the uh, assets can be unclassed and still can be managed within ServiceNow CMDB. That's the beauty part of it. <clears throat> and again, uh, what are the vulnerable items? What 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 are them are uh, unmapped and assets by category, basically, how many supervisor systems, control system, field devices, and so on. So all you can see here, and uh, OT assets by purdue level uh, from zero to three, three point five, and OT assets by type. Uh, what are the different asset types? And this is very, very important thing, uh, OT assets by manufacturer. For any uh, the shop floor or the factory floor, right? They need to, because that will be mix and match of different OEM vendors. Uh, something, they use uh, Siemens, Nader, ABB, Mitsubishi, Rockwell, Honeywell, so many of the, uh, the different uh, vendors, OEM vendors, right? So they need to have that uh, perfect uh, inventory and categorization of like what's the uh, the, the set of that uh, OEM uh, device type and from which manufacturer it basically because this is very much important. If our uh, Siemens PLC goes down, right? So they should have that uh, the knowledge of the inventory in the stockpile. They need to understand whether this uh, asset is already there in the warehouse or that needs to be rise to the purchase order and get the pro procurement done. That's become an insane amount of time for that uh, particular. Uh, matter. So that's why they need to understand about uh, what are the uh, potential uh, vulnerable items or any uh, uh, anomaly items that can be easily replaced. We, we do have any you know, stockpile in our warehouse. So that's why they need to understand that. And assets by criticality, last clip, right? And um, so for this guy, uh, Troy Morton, which is like a site supervisor, he needs to understand by launching this interactive analytics based on the OT asset manufacturer, what are the assets criticality and how much is the count basically. So what you see here is in the color code, uh, the different, uh, as I mentioned, this, uh, these are the different OEM vendor type uh, has their devices and uh, how many of the counts basically and uh, they are in which stage. For example, less critical, most critical, uh, highly critical, all that's been categorized, right? So that's one of the thing. And again, they can also understand based on the uh, 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 either the, what actually is kind of something like a matrix view, right? So then in the matrix view, they can also identify how many number of assets, which is most critical in this state. I can click click it down here and understand and try going to triangulate that particular assets instead of I spending my time looking over all the assets basically. And it gets grouped by OT assets basically over here. And that's why you can see all the Cisco, Acer, ABB, all the different types of vendors, right? So this is how easily they can filter and uh, navigate to that uh, pinpointed issues, basically. Yeah. Um, and again, for this uh, guy, as you, what you see here is the Purdue model. The Purdue model is where actually the level zero to level four and five, right? Which is the industry stack automation layer. But there is another model called ISA 95 model. This ISA 95 model is basically uh, ISA means like International Society of Automation. Um, basically, for uh, any uh, corporate HQs, right, uh, any corporate companies, right, uh, they would have the operations across the zones and uh, uh, regions and uh, also the different uh, countries or it could be different geographies. So they need to understand from the HQ perspective, uh, if ever there is a sales order comes into uh, their uh, uh, the plate, so they need to understand uh, based on the sales order, which factory or uh, which particular site, has this production capacity, manpower capacity, resource planning, or maybe supply chain enablement. All these things has to be properly identified and uh, modeled as part of the production process. And that's why this ISA 95 model is a very key imperative need for any uh, uh, the global uh, enterprise companies, right? So that's why you can see here uh, from the top-down view, there's a London site basically. Under the London site, 
uh, uh, the manufacturing line, packaging line, storage line, all get configured. And uh, under the manufacturing line, this is a finishing line, cutting line, and assembly line. That's as part of the downstream process. That actually you can see here the relationship, right? Contains element of means like for this manufacturing line contains an assembly line, a cutting line, and finishing line. And this manufacturing, how the flow looks like. Then once the manufacturing is done, assembly, assembly, sorry, once the finishing is done, it goes to the cutting line and it goes to the assembly line, right? So this is how it's been modeled here, right? Similarly yeah. for the packaging area, package one, two, three, and some uh, how that's interconnected with each other with the relationships, and again the storage area. So this is very much uh, useful for any uh, uh, enterprise company that they would like to just have that uh, modeling view of the production process, basically, yeah. right? Okay, I yeah. think, um, yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think we are uh, just about time uh, closure. So we need to take a few of the questions. We have got some uh, good set of questions, Soma. And uh, yeah. I think, uh, I, I hope you, you have covered the entire thing, right? The demo part of it. So can we quickly take a couple of questions which has come through? Uh, sure, definitely, yeah. Go ahead. Please. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So uh, I try to, because in the interest of time, I just put a couple of questions together. So uh, the question have come in like this, uh, how uh, are there any existing or new manufacturing specific CMDB classes available? And also how do you discover OT asserts uh, while they get stored in CMDB? Right, that's a great question. So uh, for the, uh, the manufacturing, uh, <clears throat> the OT classes, right? So it's already as part of our Tokyo release, uh, we already have introduced 20 plus classes basically from the level zero level one uh, level zero is not there right because level zero is more of like an uh, industrial equipment or field devices that will be called with the iot's and such but from level one to level uh, four and five we have that uh, ot class models so that's all uh, uh, dedicated class models classes actually created as part of the ot uh, package or uh, operation technology package and uh, maybe i can share that information later on uh, how that uh, the parent class and the child class looks like uh, for under the supervisory system, control system, and field devices. And that's part of the, uh, the parent class called operational technology, right? So there are 20 plus classes already there, and it's we are going to um, uh, enhance the numbers by adding more uh, classes for the level zero as well, right? So that's okay. all. This. And second thing, your question is like, um, what's the next question? Sorry, I forgot that. So this is more about how do you discover OT assets, right? Ah, great. Right. Yeah. yeah, so um, great. So for the, the, the discovery source, right? Uh, uh, ServiceNow is not into the play of like having the native discovery engine, uh, like what uh, we have it for IT operations management. We use the mid server to discover that devices. But for the OT, uh, since the protocols are proprietary standards and the communication protocols, so that's actually mix and match of different heterogeneous uh, layers, right? So that's why we would like to uh, uh, rely on third party services like something like Tenable, Microsoft Defender, or Clarity, and Azomi, and so on. So, and we have ready made integration connectors for all of that, uh, the big list of uh, the third party integration services. And there is no need to like uh, reinvent the wheel to have the hookup integration between the service now to the particular third party services. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Soma, for that. A quick uh, uh, question to Bharat for you. Uh, Using ServiceNow, uh, how we can improve the order cycle management activities? Very specific question to one of the use cases, I think. So would you like to take it? Yes, yes. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Santosh. Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, you know, as part of uh, even one of our customer, you know, came, uh, came to us, you know, with a similar kind of challenge, like, you know, as part of enhancing, you know, customer experiences, right? So we have uh, developed a solution around uh, how to, uh, you know, optimize the order to cash optimization kind of scenario. Like in this particular scenario, a solution to cover uh, how to improve the order cycle management activities like uh, order inquiries, order cancellations, or order uh, requisitions, or maybe order returns, etc. Which needs a continuous uh, connection between the end customers and back office operations, either by, by using you know omni-channel capabilities of service now like uh, uh, emails, phone calls, chat, uh, you know social media handles like uh, Twitter and Facebook. Yes, we have solution around that. Okay, thank you. So we are just about time. So I think we will not be able to cover all the set of questions. So uh, I would like to take uh, and uh, thank all the participants for asking these questions. We will come back to you with these responses uh, over the mail. But just before we close, uh, I would like to get a quick uh, concluding remark from you, uh, Soma and Bharat. Uh, could you give a quick uh, overview and, and a concluding remark around it? 
Yeah, thanks, Antosh. Uh, so as we uh, see, right, actually uh, the, the the trend goes towards like uh, for any uh, because the automation is the uh, the key uh, agenda for any of the manufacturing company or even non manufacturing company. If that automation that needs to be in place, then the next uh, the value levers are like how they can improve the productivity, reduce the cost, and also generate new revenue streams. So that's where actually every manufacturing company or non manufacturing company looks looks like in this uh, climate to be a uh, uh, competitor for their, uh, uh, on the race ahead for the competitors, right? So with that in case, so need to, they need to have a better visibility in terms of like keeping the OE numbers at the tip top right numbers, and also keeping the product at the right level, um, service now and uh, with the help of YAS technologies, uh, that could be the right solution, I, I believe, yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks so much. Bharat, uh, would you have a quick yeah. concluding remark? Okay. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned, right, with uh, service now uh, in our workflows, right, especially around uh, uh, manufacturing space, uh, now organizations, uh, you know, can think of uh, how how can they, you know, enhance, you know, uh, the experiences of in a very stakeholders across their enterprise uh, uh, by keeping, you know, service now as in you know, a single system of action in the middle of uh, their enterprise by uh, integrating service now uh, their other systems across the enterprise. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Bharat. And thanks, Soma. Uh, it was a wonderful session and quite informative. And I believe that a lot of participants would have got a lot of inputs from this. And I would uh, thank all the participants who have joined across the world. Uh, please look out for an email from us with the link to the recording. And uh, I would like to close the session now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.